Hi everybody, I'm George Levy. I believe we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. And if we use this technology properly, we're bound to make the world a better place. So to help make this happen, I'm bringing you this video today from beautiful Curaçao. And in this video, I'm gonna be answering a question from one of the students of the Blockchain and Bitcoin Fundamentals course from the Blockchain Institute of Technology. And his question is, how can you audit transactions in a blockchain? That's a great question, and I'll give you the answer right after this. Let's discuss now how you can audit transactions on a blockchain, and we're going to specifically focus on the Bitcoin blockchain because we can go directly to the public blockchain and look at all the transactions being done on Bitcoin. To do so, we first need to understand what is a Bitcoin transaction, and I'm going to do that briefly just to put things into context. A Bitcoin transaction is nothing more than a message which describes the transfer of Bitcoin value, and that, is, that message is digitally signed using cryptography. Let me explain exactly what that is. Think of a Bitcoin transaction very similar to a check. A Bitcoin transaction has three primary pieces you need to be aware of. And I'm using the image of the check because it might put things a little bit clearer for you to understand what we're talking about. First, you need an input. And the input is where the Bitcoins that are being transferred are coming from. So the wallet takes care of assembling a transaction and it requires an input. And for to do a transaction, it needs to first have available Bitcoins from other transactions that it might have received. All of those correspond to the input for the transaction. Then you need an output, which is where are those Bitcoins going to be transferred to? So you've got so far the input, which is where the Bitcoins are coming from, and you've got the output, which is where the Bitcoins are headed. And finally, you need the amount. And that's how much Bitcoin or how many Bitcoins are going to be transferred from the inputs over to the outputs. And notice that Bitcoin is a generic term because that's the name of the currency. But specifically, transactions in Bitcoin are measured in Satoshis. There's actually 100 million Satoshis in one Bitcoin. This is very valuable because many Bitcoin transactions are not even one Bitcoin in full size. So in order for you to be able to send, say, you know, 0.3 Bitcoins, then you need to break it down into Satoshis. And that's how the wallet takes care of processing that transaction. It measures how many Satoshis are being transferred from the inputs towards the outputs, and that gets determined in the amount of Satoshis that are being transferred. Then that entire message needs to be digitally signed, and that's done using the private key of the owner of the Bitcoins. The wallet takes care of signing that transaction to make sure that you're able to process that transaction properly. The Bitcoin transactions, once they are created, are sent to the entire Bitcoin network for verification. This is done on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. That is, when someone sends Bitcoin to someone else, the Bitcoin is sent directly to them, but the transaction is sent to the entire Bitcoin network for verification instead of actually sending it to a bank. So what you have is you have a network of thousands of computers around the world all competing to have the opportunity to process that transaction and verify that it's accurate. Once that transaction is verified to be accurate, that is, that there are enough Bitcoins available, that they are being sent to a valid Bitcoin address, and that the correct amount of Bitcoins are being sent, and that it has been signed properly using the private key of the owner of the Bitcoins, they are then assembled into blocks. And clusters of these transactions are added to the Bitcoin blockchain as blocks, one approximately every 10 minutes. So what you have is all the most recent transactions that are being mined in Bitcoin are grouped together and assembled into blocks once approximately every 10 minutes. Let us now go to a block explorer to see publicly how these transactions are reflected online and you can audit and look at individual transactions as they take place. To put into context right now how you can audit a Bitcoin transaction, one of the key things I want to do is take you back to a little bit of history in Bitcoin. If you're familiar with Bitcoin, there is a very special moment that's celebrated on May 22nd every single year, which is called Pizza Day. Now, Pizza Day is celebrated every year on May 22nd because it was the first time that anybody bought anything using Bitcoins. That is, somebody actually paid Bitcoins 
for any type of product, and it happened to be pizzas. And the man was Laszlo Hanyex. What you're seeing right now on your screen is how this whole process unfolded. Laszlo actually posted on the BitcoinTalk.org forum that he was interested in buying pizzas. He was actually making an offer. He said, I'll pay 10,000 Bitcoins for a couple of pizzas, like maybe two large ones, so I have some left over for the next day. And you can actually see the URL here where you can actually see this. Um, the thread begins on May 18th. And you can start seeing as you go through the conversations as people start saying, hey, you know, I'm interested in, you know, I might do it. And other people say, hey, that's quite a bit. You could sell those for about $41. But uh, there was really nobody ever buying pizzas, but he wanted to buy pizzas using Bitcoins. So there's a whole thread of conversations, people going, last of all, I would offer to buy you a pizza, but I'm not based in the USA. You might think I'm a prank caller. And this thing keeps going and going and going until we see that Laszlo states that on May 22nd, he has successfully traded 10,000 Bitcoins for pizza. And furthermore, he posts pictures of the pizzas. So right here you see exactly what the pizzas are, and uh, it's a beautiful thread. But the question is, how could you really tell if, in fact, Laszlo paid 10,000 bitcoins for those pizzas? And there's actually a very easy way to do that, and that is by going to a block explorer. Now what you're seeing here is a block explorer. This one's btc.com, and there are many other ones as well. But I'm going to use this one specifically because I like the format of how it presents all the information. And I happen to know the transaction ID for that specific transaction of 10,000 bitcoins for pizza. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post that inside and I'm going to do a search for that transaction. The block explorer will then go into the public blockchain and look for that transaction. What you see is that that transaction took place on block 57,043 and you see that as an input there were 10,000 bitcoins that were inputted into this. So what you see is there were 131 transactions that were combined into one specific output to one address, 10,000 bitcoins. And those took place on the specific timestamp of May 22nd, 2010. So as you can see, even this transaction that took place back in 2010 is still publicly available for review and auditing on a public blockchain. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that I'll see you again in future videos. If you haven't already, I invite you to click like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Until next time, we are changing the world one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy.